Welcome everyone. We'd like to invite uh, Brent White and Tim Roberts. Uh, Brent White is a security, senior cons security consultant at TrustedSec, and uh, Tim Roberts is a senior security consultant with NTT Security Threat Services Group. Both have uh, spoken at ISSA International, DEF CON, Derby CON, and various B-sides. Maybe not always together, but uh, so we have them tonight together, and we appreciate uh, having them. Their theme is skills for a red team. Let's give them a hand. I going to fall over. I think we almost died. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been interesting, huh? Short talk, right? right. So, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, I'm Brent White. I'm uh, Tim Roberts. Yep. <laughs> so, as you, you can see, we're very mature. Yeah, as you can tell from this, we're extremely mature and highly professional. So, yeah, I know. Uh, hopefully, you're not too disappointed at that. So, uh, you know, the, the wonderful English, English over there. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get into it. So what do you mean by red teamer? Um, red teamer is often a defined, it's kind of subjective in InfoSec. Like some people will say, well, red teaming means this, while other people are like, no, it means this or whatever, and it becomes this butting head thing. Uh, for us, we're defining it specifically for this talk as uh, attempting to covertly identify gaps. Uh, this includes physical and social engineering gaps, security awareness, in addition, to, often in addition to technical. Uh, some clients prefer we don't touch their systems, we just get to their systems and we have a proof of concept. But uh, in this we're going to focus primarily on uh, the social aspects and the physical aspects. Um, so therefore, red teamer means uh, you're a member of a red team. So show of hands, who in here has ADD, ADHD? Okay, you're not going to hear anything we're going to say because of, you know, <laughs> just, just a warning, you're going to in a few months go back and watch the video because you won't hear anything we say. So. Yeah, squirrel. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, I, it's like a Time poor. Serious. This is a very poor stand-up comedy act, apparently. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So we're going to talk about a few different assessment types: covert, overt, and hybrid. And we'll go ahead and jump into those. So, and, and something else too. If anybody has any questions while we're talking, please raise your hand or just interrupt us so we can go ahead and or throw something at Brent. So. Yeah, money or something. Uh, that is Theresa. Yeah. She's really sweet. Yes, yeah, nice lady. Has a mouth on her though. All right. So, all right. Uh, <laughs> see, I'm telling you, this is gonna, this is going bad. This is gonna go awful. So, um, covert. Tom Clan. So you try to be all sneaky and covert, and uh, we had some trolls. It's like, okay, the short guy reads too many Tom Clancy novels, and it's like, no, I don't. I try to be sneaky. So. Um, this is basically if a, if a company has you come in and it's like, okay, see what you can do as an attacker, an unauthenticated, or unauthenticated uh, malicious attacker. What can you do? Where can you go without, uh, you know, without the approval of being there? So uh, we'll talk about some methods about uh, staying covert, trying to avoid detection, and so on. You know, and some of these terms are kind of interchangeable too, uh, depending on what pen testing group you work for or whatever. I mean, we're pen testers, so like some of the service offerings we offer, we use verbiage like covert, overt, hybrid. Uh, it's easy to understand for clients when they're thinking, you know, how do we want these guys to approach their assessment? Do they want to do a walkthrough and hold her hand and tell us the issues that they have? Or do they want us to actually uh, take the role of, of uh, you know, yeah. criminal? And that also depends on the maturity of the company's uh, security program, too. And the client relationship. Yep. So the covert assessments, uh, we've got a couple different pictures in here um, from actual assessments. Oftentimes we will wear body cams um, or just have a camera with us. That way we can, the client requests, hey, can you guys film this interaction or this uh, bypass or something like that? Uh, because they don't get to see it. They just kind of take your word, word of mouth. As soon as they get the report, oh, it says you bypassed this or that. Uh, how did you do this? Um, well, it says in the report. Well, but how did you actually do it? We want to see how you did it. So oftentimes we'll wear uh, uh, body cams. Sometimes we'll just take still photos. Uh, this top right one is pretty funny. Um, it was a human resource office. And uh, they had like a dimple lock. Uh, we were able to pick it, get into it. Uh, and there was all these cubicles around and the cubicle walls are so high that nobody could see their closet that had all the employee records in it. Or me. Or Brent. Yeah. <laughs> me, I had to kind of get a little, a little shorter, but yeah. uh, nobody could see us uh, pick this lock. And so we're right beside a cubicle, literally probably here. At, at the uh, end of the hallway, too, you look down the hallway at the end, the end of it was a, uh, a meeting room with glass doors, right. and they were in a meeting, and you know people were kind of looking around. So 
But it was, it was funny because we got into the HR room, all these employees' records and files, got the point of contact's record, and we ended up putting it on his desk later on that day. It was kind of kind of trolling him, but um, yeah. So that, we, uh, yeah, for these yeah, covert assessments, I was talking before, uh, social engineering and physical or, or you know, they're common, kind of driving factors for a lot of this. Uh, one of the number one, as most people in here know, uh, compromises is through social engineering, uh, whether it's on-site, fishing, vishing, something like that. Um, so what we do on-site is uh, we really implement the social engineering. We push uh, to test their incident response. We push to, to test the security awareness and the overall security culture in the company. Uh, so in this, we'll really push the limits and the boundaries of what we do from anything to trying to sneak in, okay, well, we got from A to B, we already did this, now let's go troll the security guards or let's go you know, talk to some people and ask them for information or to let us into sensitive areas or let us touch different things, so. Electronic things. Electronic yeah. things. So we actually have a talk that we, we do called Security Guards, LOL, and it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. And so we're not knocking security guards. The whole reason we do that talk, and, and you'll see, we'll actually mention a few of those things, is because there are so many companies, they'll have these large facilities and their entire physical security program, minus a few biometric you know, sensors or something like that, uh, they, uh, they put it all on like one or two minimum wage security guards. And so once we walk in and we establish a rapport with them, um, we have several times, especially an awesome story from Tim, where one of the security guards actually handed over their entire set of keys to him in exchange for his keys, which was a ring of bump keys. Uh, you know, yeah, I'll come back and get these later. So, um, so you'll, you'll hear some of the stories with that, too. Um, so physical security bypassing methods, uh, one of the things that we always focus on when we do this is we like to use tools that are available to the public. So like the under the door tool, which is available, I think, from Rift Recon and a few other places for like They're pretty easy to make, too. like 40 or 50 bucks. And then a shove knife, which is, I think, 15 or 20 dollars. Bump keys, they're 10 to 20 bucks, depending on which set you get. Canned airs, like a yeah. dollar. Yeah, the sh uh, shrum tool is two dollars and 50 cents. A uh, piece of plastic that is made to go between strike plates and things to bypass locks, ten dollars or no, it's five dollars for a ten pack. Or you use your hotel room key and it's yeah, out, so. or a credit card. So the point is, we always make sure that we use things that are so easy to get, and we can show you. Okay, we we had no access. Now we're in your data center using you know fifty dollars worth of tools. So uh, yeah, that picture is me reaching really high <laughs> keyboard that was the uh, that was the whole keyboard uh, the whole system uh, for access. the security access uh, it showed all the security cameras and everything so uh, yeah it was fun getting a shell on that and doing whatever I wanted to turn the cameras off if I wanted to and uh, having our way about the building so what can you do and cannot do um, you know, oftentimes during the, the kickoff call, when you're discussing your rules of engagement, um, how you're going to do things, what you're going to do, I don't like to go in specific details because, you know, that way if I decide to do something, I'm like, I don't have to go, you know, it's better to ask for forgiveness kind of thing, right? Um, but it is important when you're talking about, like, after hours, for example. Uh, or do you want us to do after hours assessments? Do you have cleaning crew? Do they prop open the doors at night? Um, how do they handle that? Do you guys have after hours workers coming in? Do you have execs coming in and out? Uh, these are things that are important to ask because oftentimes people just focus on doing it during business hours. Um, the windows we like to do most of these assessments on are during lunchtime, uh, during close of business when a lot of people are coming in and out of the building. A lot of foot or, traffic. Yeah, and then after hours, depending on if they have armed security guards, um, <laughs> We like to try to avoid yeah. after hours for that because some people are trigger happy security yeah. guards. Breaking um, into a building at, at night with armed security guards is not a good idea. Right. Um, and then a, uh, a friend of mine uh, during a report review um, at Trusted Sec was talking about how uh, one of the assessments they did that the security guard said, yes, if we would have seen you in that facility, we would have fired at you. So uh, from that point on, they no longer do, uh, they no longer do the physicals at night, after, after hours, hours, when there are armed security guards. So something to keep in mind, for right. sure. Um, you know, we were talking before, you know, we're primarily talk, discussing physical and social aspects, but, you know, it's hacking in scope. Uh, I get into the building, I get into the server room, can I plug into the core switch? What's off limits, what's not off limits? I think having no scope is best for these types of assessments. 
um, because it's more reality based, it's more scenario based or whatever. It's okay to be like, all right, well, we just want you to focus on getting from, from here to, I don't know, the, the CTO's office. Um, we want you to try to get on his system. Well, of course, that's a limited scope there. Uh, but if it's pretty open, you want to try to sway the client to buy into that. No scope at all. Let us go in. Let us do our thing. Uh, if we didn't know anything, this is like a, not a full disclosure or partial disclosure assessment type, but it is, uh, it's kind of going in blindly. Mm -hmm. You know, are these the things we can do? Um, can we pick locks? Some clients don't like us touching their locks or trying to bypass things uh, because they're afraid, you know, well, it might damage it or it might do this or that. Uh, especially electronic locks. Sometimes they don't like us touching any of the electronics in those locks or security systems. Yeah. Um, or if you see a laptop or a, an external hard drive or USB, you know, can we grab that and take it out with us? Things like that. Um, so I know that penetration testing is a large part of a lot of these assessments. And so um, because this is social engineering village, we're going to focus mostly on the physical part of things. But uh, something to keep in mind when you do get inside and you are able to plug in and gain access to the network, you know, you want to try to stay covert. You want to do things like half open TCP scans where you're not having that full connection to potentially alert an IPS or an IDS. Uh, you know, if you do gain, uh, if you do gain access to a system, you know, what PowerShell scripts or things are you running? Are you, are you trying to add a user? Or are you trying to brute force an, an admin level user or something that could potentially set off alarms. So, you know, those are things you want to keep in mind if you do get access that you're not, you know, freaking out the admins at, you know, whatever time of day you got into their system. So those are things, those evasion techniques are things to keep in mind. You know, and a part of this too, it's kind of, this is a real quick story, but did a red team assessment. Um, we had gained access to the facility. Uh, we plugged in a, a rogue access point, put it near the window. We were sitting in the parking lot uh, in a van in a hotel right across the street. Um, by the river. By the river. Uh, <laughs> we had this high gain, you know, DBI uh, antenna pointing up there. We were able to connect to it. Uh, from there, we were able to, you know, compromise some SQL databases, dump some tables. We did a bunch of stuff. We completely owned these people. And then when we gave them the report, they were so upset with the report that we did not report uh, from a Nessus finding that they found a telnet was open. And they're like, you didn't add this to a report. Well, this is a red team assessment. We're not going to look at every little Priorities. Priority. Yeah. I mean, plus it was an internal, you know, telnet's open internally. I mean, that's a that's kind of a deal, I guess. But but to to you know to express that to a client uh, and to say, listen, this is a we're the bad guys here. We're not doing a bone scan. We're not doing you know reporting on every little thing. We're going from A to B. Uh, if you want a more overview or a bigger, broader overview, then you know you need to be specific about that. Yeah, we try to make it more like a real real world scenario. So. Uh, is incident response a part of the assessment? Um, you know, oftentimes what we do is <clears throat> we'll try to try to be obvious. Um, we'll wear bright colors. Uh, we'll um, go to the security guard. You know, Brent mentioned this this uh, story. So I, we had already been around the facility, did a whole bunch of stuff. We found a con security control room um, that had access to printing off badges. It had access to a lot of different things. They had keys in there to their, their company vehicles. They had keys, hard keys to the entire facility in an aluminum box that had a wafer core on it. Oh, um, and they, they, also, they also had badges from uh, employees that were just recently terminated. And they were still active. Yeah, they, bad, the cards were still active, but they had them securely hidden under a keyboard. So, <laughs> Super safe. So we get to this security control room, and we couldn't, we couldn't get in it. We couldn't pick the lock. Um, and it was heavily congested, a lot of people walking by. Um, so I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to go up to the security guard and I'm going to ask you for keys. And it's like, yeah. okay. So, so right, we go well. over there and we'd it's already... Like we're done. He's in. We're screwed. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, and we'd already done quite a bit of, of, of uh, compromise, right? We'd already gathered what we needed. But at this point, the client was really concerned about their security guards. You know, they were concerned about are they doing their job, their due diligence, are they following through? Uh, can you guys test this? So I walk up, I have those keys in my hand. I was like, hey, yeah, I'm doing inventory and I need to do an inventory of uh, hard keys uh, in some of the servers in the security control room, but my key's not working. The key John gave me um, apparently doesn't work. I called him, he said, I could just use your keys. Is that cool? I'll bring them right back. In fact, I will leave my keys here. That way you know I will bring them back. The bump keys. Right. right. And so she's like, oh, well, just as long as you bring them back before five, because I have to lock up the building. Absolutely. All right. Cool. Not a minute later. Thank you. Yeah. So we had these keys. We ended up going down there. We ended up 
and getting into a lot more stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was, you know, we really pushed the envelope there and she gave us, the security guard gave us her keys. Uh, and it was to multiple facilities, not just this one. Yep. So if we wanted to leave and go to another facility after hours or whatever. In one of their company vehicles even. In one of their, yeah. yeah. <laughs> With one of their badges. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this picture is kind of funny. Uh, the one this with one, the- uh, This one. Yeah, the obfuscated and This face. one. Um, there. So we walk over to this lady and she prints badges and she also, uh, she, I think she does like scheduling or paychecks or something like that. Uh, but this was near a cash kind of area where they handle a lot of money. Yep. Uh, we ended up walking over to her. I told her, hey, I'm doing some, uh, some inventory and I'm also doing some network tests, uh, just scanning for, I think I said something like network connectivity. Uh, a lot of times what we use is, hey, we're just doing some network connectivity. Yeah. I'll be right yeah. real quick. We and heard just your, kind of yeah, we, under their desk and say, yep. be just a minute, just, you know, it's in, and they don't, yep. they just move out of the way. Yep. So that's exactly what she did. She rolled out of the way. And Bryn's sitting there talking to her, asking her about her day. She had some pictures of her kids on her desk. You yeah, know, I felt awful because I started talking to her about her uh, grandkid being in soccer. And I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, that's a great sport. And, you know, how many go like, goals has she scored? And, like all this stuff. The whole time, Tim's still in credentials and stuff. And just <laughs> <laughs> awful, awful. So it's funny because you can see me doing it. And then I have, uh, I think I plugged in a key logger. And I was like, well, this, this is just going to test the network connectivity. It's USB. And I plug it in, and I was like, actually, before I do this, could you lock your system? So she locks her system. I plug it in. I was like, actually, can you log back in now? So she logs back in, get her domain credentials. Done. <clears throat> and now I'm on there, and I'm doing my thing. And then I, I, have, I have this clipboard, which we have another story we're probably we're going to get into, but I want to go ahead and talk about this because it's funny. Um, Look at those shoes right there, man. Nice shoes. Whose man. shoes are those? So I have this clipboard that I've got, um, I've got a Raspberry Pi in it. I've got a wireless stick on it so you can SSH into it. So what Brent can do from his phone is SSH into this and see whatever I'm scanning of the badges. So I've got all these, uh, all these sensors on here to scan badges. So what I was doing with this is I had this inventory sheet. It gets worse, I promise you. I was like, what's you. your, what's your gets name? It gets much again? worse. Can I see your badge? And she gives me your badge and I'm put it on there. I'm writing her name down. But so. no, you don't just put it on there. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> so when, I'm you, when you read this thing, it doesn't, you can't, you know, you can't just like set it on there like this. You have to do, you have to do this. So that is not a joke. It's like, yeah, can I see your badge? I just need to write down a few things. Like that's pretty creepy. <laughs> she didn't ask any, she's like, okay. she Yeah, so go youth soccer, right? So where, I'm totally just, yeah, squirrel. Yeah, well this next one where, where Brent is on the right there, this was, uh, this was another assessment yeah. we did where we walked straight through the, the mail room. Uh, we had tailgated behind some people, walked straight through there, and they had all, this, um, all these cabinets containing like, like, I think it was like some PCI data, PHI, yeah, know, like, was... something like that. Um, I think this was actually a healthcare company. But we actually walked through, um, and, and Brent just opens the door and we're yep. just kind of walking. No around. lock. We're trying to no purposely lock. get caught at this point. Didn't have a lock or anything like that. And this was the room where they stored, um, they had all their backups. So they had tons of hard printed off backups, boxes and things like that. We're picking up boxes. We're, we're being really absurd trying yeah. to be like, really? What do we have to do for you guys to, yeah. to ask what are we doing? So, like, excuse me, ma'am. I'm not supposed to be here. Could you question me? Basically. Got a question. <laughs> What's what? What state was it in? We're not at liberty to say that. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but we will tell you that we were not allowed to use audio or video recordings in any way because it's against state law. Yep. And they had armed security guards, so that's yep. why we focused on the, uh, the sweet lady in the cubicles. So funny story. So this is during the uh, covert part. Uh, and later on, we actually did the overt assessment. And as we were going through uh, the HR ladies, even though we were being escorted by, uh, by the point of contact, the, arch the HR lady was like, I'm sorry, you guys can't go in there. And we're like, okay. You know, even, <laughs> even though we had, you know. We'd already been yeah, in there. Yeah, so. so we're like, all right. I've already seen that room. Yeah, right. we're good. So um, usually wait until the end to try and get caught, you know, try to do our sneaky stuff first. So uh, there was one, one time where uh, it was another, another coworker, and so we actually got into this building, and they're like, oh, yeah, there's security guards, and he monitors remotely. And we're like, cool. So we walk around for an hour, 
looking at the camera the whole time trying to get you know give them the benefit of the doubt because again we don't do these assessments to come and say look how bad you guys you know look how bad you are we like to give them an opportunity to catch us and for a teaching especially moment, after right? we've identified some really critical vulnerabilities if they yeah. they they suck yeah it's like, and and, it's and at that point it's like okay we really need to see at what point is, is that. And that's why we do, do, do the whole push kind of thing to really push the bounds. Yeah, try to make people uncomfortable where hopefully they'll say, like, what are you doing? You know, get out of my face. So, um, so we were at this place and, you know, we'd gone around. We didn't, found all this stuff. And they had these double glass doors at the front that had enough physical gap where you could actually, you know, put tools through it. So I had a coat hanger. Took my time looking at the camera behind me. The glass door's right here. So I'm looking at the camera, straightening this thing out. <laughs> this is not a joke. This is a I walk over to the receptionist table, get a, a handful of napkins. Starbucks napkins. Yeah, and I, I tied them into a big, you know, like flower, like a poorly arts and crafts flower thing around. So I put it through the door because they had a, a request to exit sensor on the other side. So my whole goal was to see if I could trip that. And so I'm looking at the thing, and so I'm literally like going like this all the way up and down, trying to get it to trip, and no one came. So, uh, so I look at coworker, and I was like, okay, we've been here an hour. Like, are we, you know, what's going on? It's so like he's like, okay, what are we gonna do next? And I was like, jumping jacks. And he was like, okay, that's cool. So we turn around, and we look at the camera, and we do jumping jacks for at least 20 seconds, and the guy never came. So, yeah, fail. Very secure. All right, let's move along. We... All right, so uh, the overt assessments. Um, yeah, I'll let you look at these pictures because they're funny first and kind of use your imaginations. But um... So before you get into it, so you, you see that? Can you see that right there? There's a hole there. It's a, uh, can you over here on this side? It's a gigantic hole. You can it's for put a your forklift, by the way. It's like so a forklift can pick up their confidential data bin and move it around. So the, the bin... It's this tall, and I think what is about three and a half feet wide. Yeah, something like that. And they had a best lock on it, like a really one of those really nice, really best good locks lock. on it, uh, holding it, holding the flat. Yeah, and so yeah, and so you could put your stuff in there, but you could also, we we actually we call it what shredder bin bingo is what we ended up calling it. So you stick your arm in there and you pull out a, however many papers you want. We what a passport photo. Yeah, we found some passports, some uh, background check uh, forms, a uh, bunch of other stuff. I mean, it was it was it was ridiculous. A loan for a house. A loan, yeah, yeah. A, a home loan application. Yep. And so we're like, are you serious right now? And uh, and yeah, so you could do that on both sides. Oh yeah, and this is also Tim on top of a vending machine going through the ceiling during the covert part in a major hallway, and no one stopped. Well, there's okay. So the funny thing, seriously, no one stopped. They're like, there's God yeah, on top yeah, of the I'm vending on top machine. Top of here, but the funny thing is, is that the, the other side of that wall is their data center, yep. and they didn't have floor to ceiling um, walls. They didn't have an IDS on top. They didn't have any kind of screen or fence or anything. Yep. So, and the, but they conveniently had an Aquafina machine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That let me get up and over. Yeah. So. Thanks, water. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, this is just a quick demo, you know. And this is part um, we go. start getting into. Uh, we're going to start talking about the overt part where you walk through and the methodologies and stuff that we developed. But, but before we, yeah, before we talk, show the video though. Um, so again, this goes back to what I was saying before. Sometimes we'll have body cams, but if it's an overt, sometimes we'll escort. Uh, the client or the point of contact through the facility as we're doing these things and playing them out. Yeah, and, or we'll do a yeah. covert prior to doing that. And then after we give them, you know, kind of an overview of what we found, they'll say, okay, well, can you kind of show me? So we'll walk around and show them. Well, for the sake of time, because oftentimes we only do these assessments, so we only have like a week, maybe two weeks max, um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll just show them a video and that's kind of... Uh, yeah. So in this situation, this highly secure facility, but in their back, forgot the air quotes. highly there you secure go. There facility, go. Um, they had two points of entry, the front door, the lobby, where a rotating door is, uh, some security guards, and then the back door, where nothing is, except for a big gap and a, and a badge reader. And a camera that didn't a, even really cover the door. And a camera that was, uh, it was actually fogged over, so it was one of those PTZ cameras, but it had the, the dome was like weather-worn and... And it was fogged. It was bad. <laughs> so I'm like, there's no way they're seeing me do this right High now. High definition. Yep. So, yeah. Click that. Do this right here. Um, show you so, the door and then I'll show that it's shut. Here, let me get audio. Yeah. 
No, no we're sorry. good. Yeah, the audio's not a big deal. So yeah, this that's it's just brand talk, and nobody wants to hear that. Yeah, that uh, sounds <laughs> stupid. So you can see it's locked. Tim's outside in his cool taxi hat, and um, just a shove knife. And then fifteen bucks for that in like seconds. He's yeah. Well, they didn't have like the, so their plate too was deviated on the on the outside, yep. so you could get the shove knife over it and, and just kind of wiggle it around and, and open the door. And it's very quick yeah. and very very easy. That's the same facility that. So the previous year we had done similar assessment and they're like, oh yeah, this year, you know, we, we installed dimple locks and you, you know, good luck. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. So we get to the server room where the new dimple locks were and the strike plate wasn't. Oh, it was on the opposite side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but there, the lock was a bit tough because they had it kind of backwards. It was kind of hard to explain. So when I, I used my shove knife and I almost had it, so Tim's like, all right, hold on. And he brings his shove knife over the top. And within a few He's seconds, of both of us like <laughs> pushing our shove knives in there, we were right in the data center. And, um, and so that picture, and there's a couple slides back. Let me see. Uh, where is it at? So that, that was on the other side of their, you know, yeah. new dimple lock door. So that was, you know. That's where they had their security, uh, security stuff in, inside the data center. So. All right, let's see. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> so oftentimes, if we're not able to, to clone badge or, or anything like that, um, we'll just make fake, fake badges. And we talk about this a lot in our talks. Um, we'll just, uh, these are kind of the dimensions, but we'll, uh, we'll just go to our hotel. We have a little printer. Uh, we'll get some blank HID badges or if whatever PVC if we see that they've got that we'll print them on PVC uh, But we ended up, you know, just photoshopping uh, our badges and making some generic badges um, You know, bef we, we gather this information during the pretexting and kind of our um, Passive reconnaissance when we're driving around oftentimes we will go the day before uh, And as people are leaving we'll drive by the facility or go around the parking lot because cars are coming and going and we're not Sticking out at that point. Yep. Uh, and then we'll get a good look at their badges Go back to the hotel, play arts and crafts, and then uh, you know make some fake badges that we just piggyback and tailgate in, because that's the easiest thing. You don't even have to have you don't have to have like a Proxmark three or some badge cloning um, or re repeater or anything like that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be fancy yeah. at all. You just walk in behind people as they're coming up. Yeah, and one thing that we love are company barbecues because oh, you know yeah. social media like oh let's show our cool our, how cool our company is. Put pictures of the barbecue online, and they do, and people are wearing their badges, and so we zoom in. And, and we usually try to schedule our assessments around that time. That way we yep. can have some barbecue before we get into the facility. Yeah, there, seriously, two times we've gone to companies, and they've had the barbecue. So we've gone into the barbecue, fed ourselves, and tailgated it right in. <laughs> so that is, that is not a joke. That's the, oh, oh we should have put uh, that picture. Oh, Because it was like, uh, it, they had this big thing, you know, synergy. So we had our barbecue, we tailgated in, and we're like, you guys want a group photo? And we're like, sure. So Tim and I. I thought we were employees, and so it, we're standing there. And, then, um, we're standing, and it's an actual like, employee, and I guess he kind of got caught in. He didn't want to be rude, you know? So it's Tim and I, and then an actual employee, and we're like, like this, you know? Well, I actually it's had, like I had this synergy. Too, and like, I was like, whoa, dude. Yeah, it's like, excuse <laughs> us, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it was so funny because, yeah, we, it, and it worked out perfect because we didn't know that the barbecue was going on at that time. It was just like, you know, a, a free gift for us. So, um, free food. so we, you know, had free food we got, you know, free entrance and we got a photo, which they printed out on the spot. So it's our cool little keepsake that we have now. So we included uh, that photo in the report, by the way. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and that was the reaction right there. So. <laughs> it was great. It was perfect. Um, any friends, show, friends, fans, show friends? The, the show friends. Some yeah. Of, some of you guys are, you guys are all yeah. friends. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Ken Adams. So yeah. And, uh, and then I know Tim uses, uh, Mr. Robot, what's it, Elliot Alderson? Yeah, oftentimes I'll so put Elliot Alderson on, on the badge times. or like Bruce Willis or something. Stupid. Stupid. Yeah. Like if I'm trying to get caught, I mean, I'm not going to do this yeah. if it's covert and, or I'm really not trying to get caught. I'm, I'll yeah. use a legitimate. Coworker Drew Culbertson, he always uses a picture of, of Alec Baldwin. He kind of looks like Alec Baldwin. Yeah. So we're like, we're going yeah. to use Alec Baldwin's so. face on your pages. <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll talk about overt assessments again. As we already mentioned, this is where you know you're you're being escorted by the client, so you have a lot more freedom. So uh, it's something like an under the door tool that's usually you know very loud. Is, has anybody used an under the door tool in here? Played? They're loud, aren't they? So they're, you're not sneaky with those. 
So if you try to go into a room and you don't know what's on the other door, I mean, you just ima- or on the other side of the door, just imagine like, like, what the hell is going on? You know, it's like you hear this loud scraping and it's like, yeah, oh, I'm maintenance, I'm fixing your doors, you know. But anyway, you, you have a lot more liberty to try that or bump keys or something, um, which we kind of, we don't really recommend bump keys because yeah, we don't, those we don't are destructive. Really those so. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing that we do with the overt assessment is we, we have a checklist that we make. Um, basically, it's just best practices for, for things. We don't, we're not doing like, you know, compliance junk. Um, we're just saying, here's what we normally attack. Here's Time out. Kinda... Compliance is not junk. We didn't compliance know, you know, isn't in junk. The, I'm sorry. Any shape or form. <laughs> sorry, PCI. go ahead. That's why, I, that's why I do my pen test. <laughs> What's that? You need the bare minimum. Right? Yeah, bare yeah, minimum. yeah. <laughs> Limited number of flair for these guys. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll use a checklist and we just kind of go through. But we also demonstrate tools. Uh, I was kind of saying before in that video. Uh, in this picture on the left uh, with me and my awesome man bun, um, we're using the under the door tool, showing the client, hey, here's how we got into here. Um, because they didn't know what it was and they, it just blew their mind. Uh, the picture on the right is funny because the uh, request for exit sensor is there. We found a... a see, you, can you see the steam? Like, yeah, I don't know right if you can see that, the, the so steam. From right here on the side that's shooting through the door. Sorry, go ahead. Quit interrupting. I, I'm, a, I'm a jerk. <laughs> now we found that uh, we found some canned air and we ended up using that to bypass uh, the rec- request for exit sensor. So they had a gap there, turned the canned air upside down, just sprayed in there. and yep. It was enough to, to trip the sensor. Um, so that's, that's us doing that. On the bottom is us opening the door. So this was actually the same exact spot that as soon as we got into this area behind this door over here, uh, and this is overt, by the way. This is after we had already done the covert stuff. So. Well, when we, when we had broken into this before, uh, a guy, this, during the covert stuff, a guy comes up to Tim and he looks at him and he's like, let me see your badge. And Tim's like, okay. And he goes, oh, you're, you you're not an employee. You don't work here. And Tim's like, yeah, I do. And he's like, no, you don't. Let me see your badge. And it was just a paper badge on top of a, an actual We, we did it really quick. So we just had to print it off like very quickly and, and arrive there. So we just shoved it on a sleeve. I didn't even have a, like an HID or hardback or anything like that. So just kind of. Yeah, it's just a piece of paper yeah. slipped in. The, so the funny thing was this guy was so sure he was catching us. I think he knew we were going to be there or something. But he was like, that's not a real badge. Let me see it. So Tim's like, all right, here you go rips up the badge in front of Tim, hands it back to him, and then walks off. <laughs> no joke. That's it? So, <laughs> that one in the report, you know, thanks, jerk guy. There you go. Got your name <laughs> in the report. So, not that we try to single out people or anything, but, you know, come on. You come to find out this guy was an exec, too. Yeah. So, he didn't, he didn't know who it's he like, was. You don't belong He wasn't here. in the kickoff calls. He wasn't in any of the preliminary planning or anything like that. He was just the guy that was like... You've got a man bun, you don't belong here. Yeah. But it was so odd because I was like, okay, we're done. Like, thanks, you know, thanks, Tim. Not, he didn't do anything bad, but, you know, it's like, all right, we're done. And then he rips it up and hands it back and walks off. And Tim and I are just like, seriously? <laughs> Is he coming back? <laughs> Can we, okay, let's keep going. So we did for like two more hours. So, yeah, thank you. Oh, and those yeah. requests for exit sensors, uh, you know, you guys probably seen the videos of, like, uh, Deviant Olam using whiskey to, yeah. to open it. Uh, right there. Yeah, Dave, Dave Kennedy used a vape. Um, you know, some of them uh, are kind of, uh, they need heat, so you're going to get more creative with that, like hand warmers and stuff like that. Yep. <clears throat> Hybrid security assessments. Uh, we're not going to go too much into this, but basically what these are is, is a combination of, of both covert and overt. Uh, if there's a large facility or there's multiple facilities, sometimes they'll say, hey, on this facility, we want you to covertly try to enter. And on this next one, we want you to walk through and kind of repeat what you did, but with the client uh, escorting you. Yep. Um, you know, you don't repeat the social engineering in this, but this is mostly like the physical stuff and how we got into the facility. Um, and then oftentimes it will be social engineering if we go back and revisit the facility that we just compromised. So they'll be like, let's go through, and then we'll walk past people we just lied to and convince them to do stuff, but it's an opportunity to, to discuss things with them. It's an opportunity to, um, to kind of blow up their security awareness to be like, hey, yeah, so these guys are here doing an assessment. Um, I'm, I think you, got, you met them. And uh, yeah, and then we say, yeah, we're the guys that lied to you and, and stuff like that. But here, here's what you did a good job on. Here's what you can improve on. 
and it's a security awareness training in addition to. Yeah. So that's kind of what the hybrid assessment uh, model is for us. Yeah, and then you know if if we also obtain creds uh, from doing a web app assessment or an external, then whoever's uh, whoever's in charge of that will say, you know, hey, here's a set of usernames and passwords. That way, if you get inside, you can try to log in, you know, to uh, the domain or whatever. That's yeah, like so, partial disclosure. Yeah. It's not like when it, you're not going in blindly. It's not a black box kind of assessment. Yep. <clears throat> when is it appropriate to keep pushing? So we we're talking about being bold and versus safe. It's appropriate when you get to that point where you're like, okay, I've exhausted all my efforts. I've done what I can. I have all of my stuff. Now what? I'm bored. Um, this is one of my favorite stories, Bo. Is so, so we're walking around. Uh, you'll see a security guard there. I wish I could like, unhide her face because she's cracking up because I'm such a funny man. Um, yeah. that, so th this is her, and those are her hands. And in a minute, you'll see why that is just so bad. So, so I walk over to her, and I was like, yeah, um, he had a fake contractor badge on. I, or no, I had a fake contractor badge on. He had a, a fake employee badge on. Yep. That's because so when you don't look like you belong there, like, I was growing my hair out for like a roll, and I didn't look like I belonged there. It wasn't, it didn't adhere to kind of their dress code. I had a beard, but I'm a contractor, so it's a little easier to to do that as as a consultant or a contractor. So yep. Brent had like a suit on or, or like a button up and some nice nice outfit on. So he was. Uh, Thank you, Tim. He was. He looked good. <laughs> um, he was escorting me around as a contractor because I was there uh, doing their policies on how they handle. Badges and keys. <laughs> yeah, it gets awful. It, yeah, wait. I wait walk for over it. to her and I was like, "Hey, uh, yeah, we're doing a." I just draw. I think I, it was off the top of my head, so I was like, "Yeah, we're doing like a NIST 853 uh, Enterprise Security Assessment, and we're just kind of looking to, to look at some of your policies. Specifically, I wanted to ask you more about your employee uh, replacement badges." Yeah, and I jumped in. You know, it's it's fine. Uh, security guard name insert here. Um, Elliot is with me, and it's it's fine. He can. He signed know. an NDA. It's all yeah, good, yeah. You know, and she's like, oh, um, okay. Yeah, it's only going to take a minute. Okay, sure. So, how do you handle when employees forget their badges at home? Well, in fact, we have a binder here, and uh, all of these badges are active, and they can get around the facility. Um, and here, let me show you. So she draw huge binder. Huge. Probably had like 50, 50 badges in it. Right. All these active, one, or I think they were called like replacement badges or whatever. Yeah, one day badges. Um, that, that she gives to the employees. And they sign their name, they put the badge number on it, and that's how they track it, and they have to re return it at the end of the day. Um, so I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to go through here and kind of do inventory and get the numbers off the back of them. And she's like, oh, okay. And Brent's like, Hey, t uh, Elliot, that's, that's probably going to take you a while. Yeah, um, and I was like, it's taking you about, do you mind if he sits down? Oh, no, that's fine. Come on. So she lets you come around yeah. the security guard desk and sit down beside her. So we have a picture that we couldn't show because it would uh, sanitate, like, you know, reasons. So basically, Tim, you can see him on the left behind the security desk opening the binder. You see her like, oh, let me show you where the contractor badges start. And then, so then we also have a picture of him like leaning back with his feet propped up on the counter while he's sitting there. That's when I started being absurd. I, I don't yeah. do that. So it, if you guys are clients, I don't just go drop my feet on the security guards. Reminder <laughs> of this the whole time. <laughs> Set it down, pick up another one. He, the whole time he's like, you know, the like creeper look. You know, I'm like, just talking to her. She's when happy. are you going to say something? You know, <laughs> awful. So uh, this is good. This isn't good. So this was good, right? What isn't good is when the security guard comes over to you and is like, what are you doing? Uh, I'm supposed to be here. Or I'm doing whatever. Um, testing, testing the physical security latches. Or I'm looking at your sprinkler heads to make sure that the, there's a recall yeah. on them. Um, yeah. <laughs> so no, what are you doing here? And the security guards get angry. Yeah. Um, and they want to punch me in the throat. <laughs> So at that point, I'm going to change my tactics, right? I'm not going to sit there and just keep using the same line. Um, and we're going to get into this, and I may be jumping ahead, but I don't care. Um, we use a fake letter of authorization quite a bit. If you've heard our other talks, we discuss this. Um, so basically what this is is we have – because I, when, I, when I first started using this, I thought, well, if I were a bad guy and I wanted to get into a facility in the middle of the day and have free reign to do whatever, what would I do? Well, I'm here for a security assessment. Um, I'm with whatever. So what we do is um, wrote up a fake letter of authorization. On the top, it's got the White House's address. Yep. <clears throat> and it says it has our company. Like I think we're calling ourselves like 
I don't know, fish nugget security or something. Yeah, it was, um, it was, yeah, yeah, fish nugget, <laughs> yep. And, uh, and through it, it has Brent's name at the bottom as the point of contact. He is the CISO himself yeah. from this company. Still haven't received the paycheck from there. that company, yeah. by the way. And <clears throat> I've got Easter eggs hidden in it just to make sure that they're paying attention. And this is how we also test our incident response, to, or their incident response, rather. Um, are they following up? Are they doing their due diligence? Are they calling that point of contact? And is that point of contact indeed the person that would authorize this? Do they even work there? Um, so uh, that, that's kind of what I use uh, when security guards get angry. At one point, I was, I was picking a lock. <clears throat> I didn't hear this guy, really big guy, which surprised me. And I was sitting there. I'm trying to get into this door. And he comes up behind me. He's like, what are you doing? Turn around, he's armed. He's like, oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm testing these logs. I'm with facilities. I'm helping facilities out. We're going to replace these cores, and we just want to make sure they're good. Um, just off the top of my head. He's like, no, you're not. Like, All right, you caught me. Here's my letter. And I give him the fake letter of authorization, and he reads through it. He doesn't even look at it. He doesn't read through it. He glances at it. And he's like, oh, well, cool. And he gives it to me. And I've told this story before, uh, if you've heard some of our other talks, but it's hilarious, and it's part of our security uh, guards LOL talk. He goes, oh, OK, here you go. You can have it back. Um, actually, I'm with security, too. And I was like, yeah, now they're buddies. Right? Yeah, obviously, you are with security. And now we're buddies. We established a rapport. And um, I was like, well, you know what, man? I'm going to be here for a couple more hours. Could you do me a favor and let the other guards know that I'm going to be testing some stuff? That way, they don't bother me. He's like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Right away, sir, yeah. <laughs> Score, it's great. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, something to keep in mind, the fake letter. So if you do get caught and someone's like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be here. And you're like, okay, here's my letter. And they look at it and they're like, nope, you don't work at the White House. What are you doing here? If you try to pull out another letter. <laughs> so, yeah. Wait, wait, I got, I yeah. got another one, too. It's like David Copperfield. <laughs> How many do you need, sir? I mean, but that's seriously something to keep in mind because it could go really bad. So. Yeah, and it's, it's you strongly want to encourage them, look at the point of contact. You'll see that that is legit. If you have to, go to your global directory and pull up their phone number and call them right now before you call the police. Yeah, please don't shoot me. Please read. Or I'll read it for you if you can't. I mean, you know, that was awful. Why did I say that? <laughs> wow. And, yeah, and squirrel. Yeah. So... It, Let's say you do get caught, and well, I'll try to keep on track here. So you do get caught, you know, it's okay if you get caught. If you're supposed to be there and, and you get caught, it's okay, it happens. So don't try to be cool and run away from the security guards. Parkour. Yeah, because all they're gonna do, hey, we had a guy that wasn't in here, police, you know, uh, this is what he looks like, go find him. Now there's a manhunt for you. So then if you get arrested by the police or worse, you know, uh, then you've got all this explaining to do. It's like, okay, well, if you were supposed to be there, why, you, why were you running away like an idiot? Uh, so if you get caught and you're supposed to be there, say, okay, you caught me. Uh, like Tim said, please call the number. I'll comply with whatever requests that you make. You know, and, uh, and, and it should de-escalate the situation. You so. know, and it's awesome if you're like some, you know, incredible parkour person, right? Um, great. Use that to get to places. Don't use it to try to get away um, because there's a risk. You're going to hurt yourself. Somebody's running at you. They're going to slip and fall, fall or if, down the fire yeah. escape or something like that. If they're armed. It's, yeah, you're not, you're, yeah, you didn't do anything wrong, so there's no reason for you to run. If, yep. When you're caught, you're caught, right? Yep. So, yeah, just use your brain. Don't try to be cool and manhunt and, you know, five stars on Grand Theft Auto and all that stuff. So <laughs> not worth it. All right, let's see. I think we got a few more minutes. I want to make sure we have time for questions. Um, yeah. <laughs> Again, Don't do that squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> so um, lock picking, bypass methods. So make sure that you know what you're doing before you go inside. If you don't know what you're doing with lock picking and you're, you're nervous and you're trying to get in somewhere, and you have no idea about how to use the tensioner and all that stuff, and you break Breaking it. the crap out of the Yeah, or you lock. break it off in the lock or, you know, <laughs> use bump keys and damage it. All that's going to do is upset the client. You're going to have to, you know, pay to replace that and all that stuff. And, you know, you look stupid. So just know what you're doing uh, before you do it. So same with running exploits and stuff. Well, the same with social engineering, too, right? Yep. If you're not good at improv or lying to people, Maybe practice that before you go on site, before you sweat. Yeah. Hey, let me drench my yeah. shirt. I'm good. 
I'm tired from accounting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or you walk no, up. You're not. Walk around, <laughs> sir. Can I help you? Yeah, it's like they caught me. I, I, I yeah, they're really good. They're they're very secure. Here's my letter. Don't you know. <laughs> Call my mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He was really good at interrogating me. I buckled. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy was good. He had a he had a knife to my throat. I promise. So yeah, um, you're talking about improv and stuff. It, when we do our recon, we always pack several sets of clothes, whether it's suits, t-shirts, or whatever. Uh, just do your recon. Figure out, you know, you want to fit dress in. Code yeah, figure out the dress code. Um, and then if you're not good with lying to people, go sit down at. Um, at the mall next to some random stranger, strike up a conversation and never tell them the truth about yourself. Or do it that, during, do it during DEF CON. That's a perfect place yeah. to do it. Oh yeah, Total, like total BS. I'm Colin. I'm from Dublin, Ireland, and I'm here. Blah yeah. blah blah. Yeah. You know, and it's like you just make up stuff and you just just practice rolling with it and filling in the gaps and letting them fill in the gaps. Oh, you have an accent. Where are you from? Guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, You're right. Yeah, my name's James. I'm glad you guys could come. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about how I'm the four-time world NBA uh, slam dunk champion. And, uh, yeah, Obviously. so we'll talk about the training and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that is, yeah. that's a far-fetched lie, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and that's the reason I say that. It's like, you know, don't be an idiot about it, right? You know, we also talk about improv quite a bit in our talks as well. Um, you know, I think, it's, I think it's great to go into an acting community or some kind of acting guild or group, um, an improv group. Practice. That is perfect for social engineering, and I think most of the people in here would probably agree with that. I, like, I, do, I do a lot of acting and stuff, and that has helped me tremendously. I, I was actually a street magician, too, and that has helped me tremendously with these things. And because, a stripper. Huh? Nothing. What? Nothing. What? <laughs> And uh, so that, that's, that, that helps contribute to the manipulation, too, and being able to just roll with the punches and lie, and like it's natural. Yep. So. so I know we have a few more slides, but it's mostly to talk about, you know, what's the main, what's the main point of the assessment? Is it to get into the domain? The, the, uh, data center. Data center, yeah, not domain controller. It's internal. Oh, that's anyway, true. so is it to get into the data center, or is it to get to, you know, employee files? Or, or, is, or Yeah, or is there something that's even more sensitive to this company? So make sure that whatever you're going after, that you understand what would be the worst thing to happen to this company, and go after that. It's not always the data center. Could be, but it, you know, there could be things that could be a lot more detrimental to the company. So. You know, and another thing to consider too when you're doing these kinds of assessments is, is they're not safety assessments, but keep that in mind when you're doing them. If I were somebody wanting to hurt a bunch of people, then how would I do that? Okay, well, I'm, I've gotten in here, they let me in with a bag, a huge bag, or they let me in with this, I got into this area, uh, you know, where the power supply is, or the backup generators and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, elevators, you know, you think about that kind of thing too, not just, hey, I found a, a switch and I was able to plug in, or I found you know the, the network department and I was able to, to get a bunch of stuff. And check my email. And check my email. And get on Facebook. Yeah. So uh, again, isn't it response testing? You know, so is that part of it? Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we like pictures and gifts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, if you get in somewhere, you know, how absurd do you have to be to give them the benefit of the doubt to see, okay, what do I have to do to get caught? And then once you do get caught, you work backwards from there to help secure, the, you know, help strengthen their security posture as far as uh, physical goes. So, you know, and then also like with this incident response stuff, I know we kind of talked about that quite a bit, but it's it's also important to ask them even before during the, the kickoff call, say, hey, what is your procedures? How do you guys do this? And then compare it to what they actually do. Yep. Are they actually following escalation procedures? Yep. Uh, practical versus impractical. I know we only have about two minutes left, so sorry for having to speed through this, but. Uh, if you are on site and you're trying to be covert, you know, it's probably not the best to wear some gigantic tactical bag with Hack the Planet stickers and stuff all over it. So, I'm looking at you, Jason Street. No, yeah, I'm where you don't think he's in here right now. But um, so, yeah, just be mindful. Like, I know whenever we're going on site, if it's a more professional thing, I have a, 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 a leather, sounds stupid saying it, but it's like a briefcase, yeah. but it's leather, you know, but opens. And um, I use these gridded things. Um, so I have a few of these, and so it's like a filing system for either my backpack or uh, the little 
side bag that I have. That way, if I need to grab something really quick, it's all right there, and I can just get what I need, and I'm not having to dig through a man purse. The same thing so. with lock picks too. Like I uh, had this made just so I could I could easily access it and then have different different tools. Um, so it's handy to have that readily available. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's handy to have things like that readily available. That way, you're not unzipping your uh, your Southward you know lock pick set and dumping tensioners all over the place. Yeah. And, oh crap. Excuse me, officer. Let me find my single pick first. You know, <laughs> that doesn't go over well. But you know it is great. We only—I know—we only have uh, a couple minutes or a minute here, and so it's—it's it's really important that you guys, um, when you're doing this, uh, you get a, a proper bag. Uh, you know, we we jest about the patches and stuff. It's great to have patches and stuff on your bag when you're at cons and walking around. But when you're actually on site doing these assessments, uh, they are loud. Unless you want attention, then it's—it's it's probably best to avoid that. Um, you guys can go back and look through all this. But yeah, here's pause some, the video. Uh, Sorry. Here's some red team toolkit examples. These are uh, kind of what we have in the bag. If we go back to this first slide with the image here, uh, all of that fits in, in that little bag there. Um, and there's tons of tons of little gadgets and things there. And a Pez dispenser. And a Pez dispenser and a Game Boy. Yeah. Uh, miscellaneous considerations. We'll let you guys review that on your own. Uh, some travel tips, you know, things you can consider, uh, keeping some TSA approved items. Um, yep. Don't, you know, know what to get off, bring in, what, what not to bring in. Um, and yeah, we're rushing. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, yeah, we're good. All right. Go. So we'll hang out outside. If you have questions, let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys.